When we last left off on our pond project, we had started our pumping uh, and irrigation into our yard and emptying the pond. As you can see, we've got most of it empty now. Almost or most is one of those difficult to use words, right? Because what's left, I'm not sure how to deal with. The muck in this pond is over the top of my boots here, at least two foot deep. Uh, when you get down even anywhere near close to that water level there, uh, I, I can't even come close to walking in there. So our objective in this episode is to get enough of that muck out of there to have a hole deep enough to get all the water. I don't know if we'll achieve it, but that's our goal. Let's get started. It's not really a part of getting the buck out, is it? But Christy's been after me essentially every step of this project. She's been saying, can we mow it? Can we mow it? Can we mow it? She's hated the look of this for years. So I'm gonna try to get down in here with the only mower that I hope not to get stuck. See what we can do. I may get stuck, but not first thing. I'm gonna be a little careful first. more of it than I thought I'd be able to. This has also given me a way to see how muddy it is out there without actually going out there. It's wet out there. Okay, sometimes the choice of tractor and attachment that I make looks a little strange. This one's pretty extreme in that direction. This box blade looks like a baby behind this tractor. And there is a reason for it, and uh, it's not this first attempt to dig here. I don't even know if I'll be able to get this knocked off, but I want to knock an edge off of this. I thought it might actually dig into that ledge a little bit. It's okay, it won't take much. So that's A range. Have to stop to shift into B range. I got a lot of people complaining about my analysis of shift on the go. Uh, I consider shift on the go to be what I can do under power, under load, I should say, without a clutch. And I just don't see the, the synchronized transmission as being that. Now, I did fail to mention that the transmission was synchronized, and that's not fair. So, 
it is a synchronized, the one through four gears in each range are synchronized. The tongue is so short, it's hard to back on this thing. Maybe I'm used to bagging that big TS-10. Boy, I'm telling you, that is a little fearful. I just didn't think that the smaller tractors would be able to pull it up out of here, uh, at least with this steep bank. Christy thought maybe the weight of the Johnny Five here might be a disadvantage and I might end up being stuck, and she, she may be correct. But it's going to take me a week and a half if I can't get a fuller box than that. Yeah, see, I'm not able to pull it out with the bigger tractor. Well, the box blade hasn't been very effective so far. I just can't get down in there as far as I would like to be able to dig out a nice big hole. It's also really slick coming up this bank right in here. Uh, it's just when it gets, once I get some mud on it, then I just can't, can't pull anything up there. So I did this work about 18 hours ago. So there is some drying already happening here. I think that may be the most beneficial aspect of what I've done with the box blade is I've stirred all that mud up and that'll allow it to, to dry. It's, it's really hot today. Well, really hot for here. It's still in the 80s. I, I mean, we haven't had much really hot weather this year, so everything's relative. Um, but it is a, a, a bright, sunny day and it should bake that a little bit. But I'm too impatient to wait. So I'm going to try to get the backhoe back down there again. I believe I can get further than I did before. I also believe that I can, uh, maybe that's settled up a little bit more right out there in the pond. Um, out there, I think I'm pointing to the, to the area I intend to. There's mud that's gone out there. Well, I actually put that out there with the backhoe and, and it I shouldn't say I put it there. I put it as close as I could to the edge and it just kept going back into the pond. I'm hoping that's not quite as wet as it was before and maybe I can actually get the dirt to stack a little bit more and, and be able to actually dig a hole that doesn't fill back in on its own. I'm pretty sure I got to get that water out of there uh, down you know a foot or two lower than where it is at least uh, before any of this higher level soil will ever dry. Um, this is silt on top of clay. You can see some of the clay. Some, sometimes the clay is not very far from the surface. Other times it's two, three feet from the surface. So yeah, there's a variety there. Anywhere the silt is, it's gonna stay wet because the clay under it's gonna hold the water in there. So as compared to some of the other pond projects you've seen on YouTube, uh, for instance, Hometown Acres, he has the shale problem where his pond is draining out to the bottom. I'm convinced that mine is not draining out to the bottom. I'm convinced that I've got good clay way down there. I have this silt layer on top, which is, you know, it's, it's not contributing one way or the other. It's just making the pond shallower and, and not very pleasant. I really think my water loss is up around the top edge where the topsoil we didn't put in a, a, a clay ring around the pond or whoever made it didn't. I think they just dug out and left the topsoil, which, which allows it to soak in. So different problems. That's one thing I found fascinating. I've really enjoyed watching Neil with Dig Drive DIY, and I've enjoyed watching Hometown Acres with their pond issues. Everyone is a little bit different, right? And, and so I've, I've really enjoyed that. I'm going to get in there and dig now and see what we come up with. Let me show you an example of how different it is from one spot to another. This outrigger found solid ground. This outrigger found nothing but mud. I'm going to tell you, it's gross out here. All the dead little fish that we had and everything, it's, uh, 
Yeah, the Bible talks about eternal death. That's a concept that's hard for me to, to grasp. But I can say that just being around these dead fish with all the flies, and it's gross. I, I want nothing to do with a place that's filled with eternal death, right? I think I'll focus on trying to live right. Not to earn anything, but because of what Jesus has done for me. I would prefer a small hole, but I just don't think that's gonna work. I'm gonna have to have a bigger one, keep it from filling back in. But you can see that that's just slop there. There's, there's no hard clay in that. I haven't got to the clay yet. Oh, maybe I felt it there. Yeah, I'm feeling the clay bottom now. Okay, I've got the hole dug out a little closer to me. I don't know if you can see for the shadows. I'll show you from this side. Water's beginning to come in from over there. That's not really where I want it to come from. I want it to come from over here. So I'm going to go ahead and dig this out and let the water in it at this point. I'm just making a mess out of it. Can't quite reach out there as far as I want. This is not optimal, but at this point, I'm thinking every single gallon that I get out of it is a win. Okay, it's a deluge now. I got uh, all that water flowing in there. It's been a little bit tricky to be able to get my spoils out here far enough that they just didn't flow right back in here. In fact, you can see that they have flowed way out there. I just keep trying to push them back. I've had to be very patient, but there's not very much water sitting up there now. It'll be interesting to see if most or all of it drains in here. You may notice this gunk on my face. Well, I'm still dealing with the poison ivy from the last project. Okay, while that's draining and drying, whatever it's gonna do, I'm gonna work on this other way. We've got a, a water hole way up at this far end and I need to drain it down through here. And based on what I saw when I was mowing, I'm pretty sure that I can get the backhoe in there. I don't want to make too wide of a trench, but I believe if I get it flowing right down in here, I've made a small trench with my feet here. And in this muck, believe it or not, that'll be enough. Here's one I did the other day and it, it started washing out. Here's the water I'm talking about. It really doesn't look like it's that much, but there's a land bridge right in there. And I think I'll even have to dig more here. And if I do, based on prior experience, you know, I, I drained that with a shovel. So I, if I have to dig any here, then I've got to dig all the way down through there. Here's what I've done so far. Some of it may be too deep, like right here. Some of it down there may not be deep enough. And here's what I've got left. I'm almost there. There's really not that much water in here. But it's higher a little bit after a rain, so I want to make sure I've got a ditch for it to get out. Kind of anticlimactic. Well, the Yankum rope is getting a little more practice than uh, what I'd like it to. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm liking this thing though. I'm used to using chains. You've seen on this channel we've always used chains. Uh, the the Yankum 
it, it just makes a more gentle pull, right? I mean, it doesn't, when I pull it tight, I, I don't have to be as careful about not jerking it. And even then, it, it, it stretches a little bit before it actually starts to pull. So I'm pretty impressed with this. I think I'm a convert. Yankum.com, use code TTWT for 5% discount. This grass holds me up most of the time out here and then once in a while I fall through it and this this particular tractor is just not very good in the mud uh, for two reasons I think one is it has not a lot of ground clearance especially with the backhoe on it there's there's not much ground clearance at all and the other is these tires I, I like these tires most of all most of the time but when we get in mud they pack full and are useless quite frankly these are the Galaxy Garden Pros they're just not very good in the mud. Of course, I shouldn't be out here anyway. So on one end, I've got a little clevis. This is what some of the options that they sent for the rope. And the other end, I forget what they call this. A soft shackle. Protector is on both ends. Some folks like to make drama out of stuff like this, but I don't know. I mean, it's just part of part of working in a wet area. So you get stuck, you pull yourself out, you move on. Well, I think I'll try to finish up my mowing now had a couple more days to dry here. I'm going to try to drive right out across this little uh, land bridge thing here. I don't know. That's what I'm going to call it. Woo! I don't know whether that's wise. This thing will do wonders as long as you don't start spinning. Oh, it stinks here, Christy. Now, it's really rough on this side. So I don't know, you know, I don't know how well I'll get along mowing over here. That's probably not good. As long as I don't uh, go under, it's fine. But as soon as it goes under and it starts spinning, uh, there's no no chance. I mean, it just looks so solid and dry here. It doesn't look like I'd have any trouble. And then poof, I'm under under it and can't get can't get back up at all. Okay, yank them. It is. I was surprised how how difficult it was even to get across there. I thought I was going to get stuck. Oh. You can see how deep the tracks are on the right-hand side over here. I was really sinking in here. I say really sinking in. That's like a half an inch or an inch. But I'm telling you, that's with this stuff, that's the difference. If you go under, if it, just a little bit more here, and I would have went under and been stuck. Yeah, see, I can't walk on that. Interesting. And Vinny went right over it. Well, didn't take much because I didn't bury it. Yeah. Why don't you just leave that attached? <laughs> uh, confidence. Yeah.
Well, guys, this is an illustration of what I'm dealing with. It looks so nice on top, right? Once I got over the edge and couldn't come back up, I knew I was in serious trouble, but I thought I might be able to go on through it. And I would have, but I slid sideways. Yeah. If I could have kept going, the hill's not that steep there. That was close, but frustrating because I didn't really care to get down in here like this. I can't remember what I said when I started this episode, whether I said I wanted to get it dry during this episode or whether I said I wanted to get the water out of it. I hope that I said I just wanted to get it drained and get most of the water out of it or get the water out of it. Well, if that was the goal, I think we've kind of made it. If the goal was to get it dry, I'm not even close. That concerns me. It actually concerns me a good bit. I. I don't know how I'm going to get it dry. Neil from Dig Drive DIY didn't need to worry about that because he was digging a bare hole in the ground. Hometown Acres didn't need to worry about that because his pond was emptying on its own and because it had only been there, I don't know, a year or two that he's been struggling with it. So he didn't have all this muck in there he had to get out. I'm growing doubtful. I hate to even say this. But I'm growing doubtful that I can do this with compact tractors. I need your ideas how I'm going to pull this off. Now, of course, you know, I could rent some huge excavator or, or whatever, a, you know, a hundred foot long arm and have somebody reach all the way. Yeah, I get that. I know, I know all that. But that's not the fun. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do with this with the equipment we have. And I don't know, I just find that kind of enjoyable. Um, and I'm just not sure I'm going to be able to do it. I, I've had trouble getting the box blade very far down in there. I'm not sure how fast this is going to dry out, even if I do rough it up like this and, and, and try to keep stirring it. It'll dry faster if I rough it up, but I don't know fast enough before, say, winter gets here, you know. So yes, I'm concerned. So I've got to go back to the drawing board a little bit and figure out what the next step or steps is going to be. I'll probably keep tinkering with it like I have been here and, and see if I can come up with something. The little two series backhoe I don't think is going to do it. I think I'm going to have to have a secret weapon. And yeah, I think I do have a secret weapon coming, but it won't be the 100 foot long arm excavator, I can tell you that. Hope you're enjoying this, guys. Um, yeah, it's funny, it's funny how every project is different. I mean, a lot of pond projects this summer, as I mentioned earlier, but every one of them is different. Uh, mine's not like any of the others that I've seen. Um, I'm not saying it's more difficult, it's just different. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time 
on Tractor Time with Tim. Come and see what God has done, His awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in Him. I think I'll take it in and clean it off. Well, count on Christy to get it going again. Just needed cleaning. A good cleaning. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. <laughs>